Hello from wherever you are, and welcome to Let's Play Games. I'm John McFarlane, Adult Services Librarian for National Public Libraries, and I hope you'll join me in learning or rediscovering some of the more common and uncommon games out there. This time, I'm going to go into one of the all-time classic games. One that you're going to discover if you knew how to play it. You've been playing it wrong the whole time. Unless you believe the Australians. This is Go Fish. Let's get stuck in. So, Go Fish. Probably one of the first card games that a lot of people learn. But I want to go through card decks just as a refresh, especially if somebody is as unfamiliar with these French style card decks, just to go through just the concepts. So this is four suits of 14 cards for a total of 52. We have ourselves our court cards, king, queen, jack, and then our pip cards, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and we don't call it one, we call it ace. And we've got it in hearts, we've got it in diamonds, we've got it in spades, and we have it in clubs. Same type of cards. Now a lot of games are going to be either ace high or ace low, depending on what type of game you're playing. This is one of those times where it actually won't matter because we're going to be gathering in this game what are called books. So books here are referring to a collection of a set of cards. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing Go Fish. It is a simple book taking game where you are trying to collect all four of a particular set of cards. So, if you have all four kings, you have a book of kings. And the purpose is to take all of the respective possible books of 13. So, what I'm going to do is, as I always love doing, is showing how to shuffle. And you've got a couple different ways. First off, you've got the simple wash, where you just toss the cards around. Obviously, it takes a little bit longer with this type, but it is more than possible. Let's just collect these up here. Notice how this takes quite some time to get everything all situated and together. Or we can do just kind of the sifting taking a couple at a time and throwing them down. But everybody's most common one is cutting the deck, so splitting it in half. You're gonna want to hold it diagonally and make a little just kind of indent and with your thumb, just let go of a couple cards at a time. So we are going to just do that one more time. And then we are going to deal cards. So typically it's anywhere between five to seven, just as a starting point, but we're gonna do five to start out. Just because we want to talk about the ocean. So I am going to look at what I have here. I'll just put it in order for you. Two, three, four, six, and king. The suits don't matter. It's just the numbers that matter here. Two, seven, jack, and two kings. So this is a strategic element where you are trying to ask for things and you have to ask for something that is in your hand. You can't just ask for random cards. And try and build up as fast as possible. So I dealt, typically the other person goes first. So you're gonna ask if I have any twos, sevens, jacks, or kings. And I have to give all of what I have to you. 
So let's say you ask for a two. I say, all right, here's a two. Excellent. I have to give you all my twos. So now this is where it's not like you can just say, do you have any twos? Can't do that. You have to ask for something that's in your hand. So uh, do you have any fours? Nope. Go fish. Because at this point, I draw a five. I don't have any books. So play continues on. Person goes, okay, uh, do you have any sevens? Go fish. They actually draw a seven. You need all four for your book. This is where more often than not people are taught uh, the pairs are what matter. Uh, to play this traditionally, all four are required. And we're gonna do that for this version just so you can understand the concept. So now it goes back. I know that this person doesn't have any fours, most likely, unless they literally just drew one. Do you have any kings? As a matter of fact, they do. And they have to give both of their kings over. Still can't make a book, but it is something. Uh, do you have any jacks? No. Go fish. Now you've got a three at play. Do you have any sixes? No, go fish. Now they're hoping to successfully draw the king, but keep in mind on your end, if you manage to draw the king, you know I have three kings in my hand. That would be a time to ask. So you're gonna draw this five here. Let's say, let's kind of hunt around. Do you have any threes? Well, okay, now I know they do have a three. And you're looking for things. And you're trying to give away also a little information at the same time. Uh, do you have any tools is what they're gonna ask. Nope, they get lucky. So let's go ahead and refill this up. Notice that the hands are gonna get pretty large. So you have to work on how you're gonna hold hands. Um, do you have any fives? Yes, they do have a five. So I hand that over. Let's see, do you have any jacks? Nope, now they got a draw. They'll get an eight for their troubles. This person will then say, do you have any queens? Nope, they're going to draw. They get another of those sixes. So notice you can get a fairly high holding hand, but still not have anything yet. This is why typically when people are first learning, they do do the pairs here because you'd have one, two, three, four already down. Uh, and that person actually would have been able to lay their kings down from the get-go. So this is probably just the more advanced version, but of the traditional rules, this whole having the entire book of fours was part of your process. So now this person says, do you have any eights? Nope, go fish. They get a queen. Do you have any fours? Nope, go fish. They get their king. So they're gonna go ahead and say, all right, I've got my kings. They're gonna place it here. So now kings are entirely out of the game and I have one book, you have nil. Notice that there is an odd number of books. So you're going to continue all the way down this deck until all the books have been respectively collected. Once you do, You'll keep count at the end. And then once you have collected, one person is won. Now I promise you, that's not the only way to play it. There's one more fun added way. It's this deck over here. Hmm. Let's find out. One second. So, Go Fish, like many other variants, has quite a few different ways to play. I'm gonna show you one other way. That actually involves two decks here, and more often than not, I haven't shown a lot of games that involve the Joker card. Uh, for a lot of games, the Joker card will actually be removed from play. Uh, it will show up in other games, even in context of one card is removed from the deck and the Joker is what replaces it. But it is there and we're gonna use it this time. Why? Well, 
If we're using two decks and there's two out of each deck, well, we at least have a set of four to make a book. Now let's look at what's been drawn here from two different decks. That means there are two books of sevens, two books of eights, two books of nines, two books of aces, etc. Still the odd one out so that way someone has the chance of actually winning. Uh, there is a theoretical tie possible here. But much like games in which you are trying to figure out and gain information, this is where you can ask for the cards that are in your hand, but you have to ask the right person. So notice, for example, you have one, two, three, four, five sevens out right now. In this version of Go Fish, you can actually ask a player across from you, to your left, to your right, that sort of thing. Uh, but you can only ask for the cards that they have. And it is a way of both gathering information, also trying to obfuscate. So for example, if you ask the player to your right, do you have any sevens? As a matter of fact, they do. Uh, this, by the way, does tell a player that you have sevens as well. But let's say that you don't want to necessarily admit that you have sevens. Uh, do you have any kings? Why, yes, I do. This makes it a little harder to go fish, but it also gives out information. Now, this person, on the other hand, across from me has, oh look, a pair of sevens. Do you have any sevens? Why? Well, yes, I happen to have a, a pair of sevens. So you would have to give it over. So this one is a bit more, uh, terminology here would be cutthroat. And they have four sevens. Not bad, right? We can make this even worse. You can also make it where a book is only all eight of the card or all four of the joker which means that someone can be holding on to four sevens, five sevens, or six seven. Until they have all eight sevens, they're just holding it in their hand. Now you do have the slight protection of somebody has to draw that last particular one, but having the knowledge of what cards are in your hand can get interesting and cumbersome. So I would say maybe start with the more simplistic go fish where you look for pairs and then work up to where you need a set of four. And then kind of experiment with this. As you get more increasingly complex games, you find yourself being able to learn more difficult and complex card games of other different types. This is just a simple book making kind of game, but there's plenty of games out there where we get to increase the complexity more and more and more. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to join us next time as we delve into demystifying or changing your mind about so many other card and board games. See you next time.